Here we go! Hey there, my name's Bubba. My name's Anna. And you're watching and or listening to Church Nerds, a proud member of the Love Thy Nerd podcast network. And this is our season finale. finale. Yeah. Was it trumpet? Uh, okay. Yeah. Well. <laughs> uh, hey, we did it. We did, we did most something. of it. We did most of it. As we were in the process three quarters of, of it. doing it. Um, we did miss a couple of episodes. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, sorry. I'm just, I have to set the expectation and acknowledge, oh, they're, they're acknowledge well, the you know. fact that we're not the best. We are not the worst. Definitely not the worst. We're also not the best. We, we have been the worst. We, last season? It was last season we were, we were the worst. I think we didn't record at all. Two, two episodes. I'm remember? like, oh yeah, that was, it was bad. Yep. It was real bad. And so we did. Even then, I don't know if I could say we were the worst. Mm, fair enough. We did more this season. We did. I don't we know how many. We tried really hard and still are. And that is why we are here. We really only do four episodes this season? I told you it felt like not many. How is that possible? Yeah, yeah. That's why I said I thought it was about half. Uh, We tried. Yeah, well, you know. We, we tried. For the love. Okay, I thought I turned that off. Speaking of trying, we tried to start this recording already. Uh-huh. And we sat here for 40 minutes. We sure did. Sat here for 40 Writing minutes. and having ideas. And then, <clears throat> and total silence. And PJ, the mo- I mean, the moment we started recording, he came in. Yep. And needed something. Yep. And I was just like, how? how? Started throwing fits. He, he's just like, he just knows. He, kids have this they know. radar it's that true. goes off. So true. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he's watching something. He is watching this is appropriate word party. Word party. The party's just begun. I don't know. I don't know. I already get flagged. Sorry. Uh, you, you thought you were that good? At, I don't know. I think you're <laughs> fine. Um, I don't know. Word party. What is that? It's a PBS show okay. about phonics, probably. Oh, yeah. Well, that, okay. Words. All right. That makes a lot of sense. Word party. Dude, you came in last night. Was that last night? You came in last I, night with a dinosaur book with PJ. Oh, yeah. Like, Let me show you this. Uh-huh. And sorry, proud par- parent moment <laughs> for just a second. P- oh, but we're married. I'm, I don't know who is and is not. Uh, under- we have the same last name. We're not brother and sister. We're married. Oh. Yikes. High five. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, and so, anyway, PJ comes in. He's our youngest. and He is three. Three years old, um, and he's fairly articulate. We're working on some things, you know, but it, he he's learning things all over the place. He goes to school at our church school, so I never know what he is or is not learning. He just true, yeah. I don't know. He's he's a he's a sponge right now for. I for don't things. think he learned this particular bit at school. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know. So he I don't. Come, you I guys talked come to in. His teacher about it today. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Oh, was she impressed too? Yes, she was. All yes. right. Yes. So he comes in, <clears throat> or you come in with him, and you're like, "Hey, watch this," and you have this little, the all these this yeah. page with fish on it. Yeah. Some fish are facing one way, some fish are facing the other, and you're like, "Hey, PJ, what way is this fish facing?" He's like, "Right," and that is the correct answer. Could happen. Could happen to anybody. <laughs> Sometimes I get that right. <sighs> hey, PJ, which way is this one facing? Left. That is a correct answer. And I think the only times he got it wrong, he was like looking at something he else. He was distracted. Yeah. Because yeah. there were dinosaurs on the other page. He, he definitely, definitely knows the correct answers. Now, we did try to say, is this, show me your right hand and show me your left hand. And we're not quite there as far as like to our own body, right yeah. and left. But he can... He, we got he knows though. on those pages, the fish and the dinosaurs, which one is facing which way. He knows it right and left. That and was I'm pretty me. impressed. I know adults that don't know. You might be an adult that doesn't know that. Uh, we did know a woman who was like a senior adult and she still had to, to do this to figure out which was her right and left hand. 
Left makes an L. Left makes case, an L. Just in case you're, you're, and if you don't know, we have a whole lot of other things to talk about, but like, just get it tattooed on your hands. <laughs> you could do that. But make sure they tattoo the correct one. Cause if you get right on your left oh, hand, you're done. That would be. You're done. Well, I remember standing in front of a sibling of mine and being all the way angry, like red in the face, mad, facing one another, saying, this is right. And the other one being like, no, this is right. <laughs> and like ready to come to blows over it. And my mom was like, pause. You are both correct because right and left are subjective. Yeah, they, I mean, they, it, they're both definitive and subjective. That's, wow, that's, that's like a whole nother, like, explosion brain moment. Um, anyway, it's complicated. This that's is all left. I'm trying to say. This is left. It's it's not subjective. It's left it's, to you. It's relative. It's not subjective. Okay. It's left to you. Hey, because words matter, all right? They do. We're going to talk about that later. Okay, well. Um. Hey, anyway, we're love thy nerd. We're not uh, love thy word. We're love thy nerd. And so that, I just came up with that right now. Guys, love thy word. Sometimes. Love thy word. New, new, new band name, I call it. Uh, sometimes I. Um, or like, that sounds like a, that sounds like a book club name. Just on fire. Organizing. Um, that would be a good book club. Or like a ladies Bible study though. I don't. Hey, why not both? I, it just got cringy. I'm I'm walking away from it. No, 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 because no, you can do like those uh, those little like water. No, press, I just hear Amy in, Grant in my head. Me. Like thy word, thy word is a lamp to my feet. Yeah, that one, and you know, I'm not gonna sing the whole thing. Yeah, I've read the Bible before. I, I'm I'm familiar with the book. But you can hear the Amy Grant song in your head. I though, can right? hear. I hear a lot of things in my head. Anyway, right now, that's what I hear, and that's why I'm like, I no. Love thy word. I'm, I'm putting it back on the table and somebody else can have it. It's not mine anymore. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and trademark it just in case. Uh, <laughs> you never know when you might need it. No, anyway, we are not, we are not that kind of podcast. This, this is Anna and I coming together to kind of find spaces where nerd culture and Christian culture might overlap. It doesn't have to be nerdy all the time. It doesn't always have to be Christian all the time, but sometimes we share these two things. And today, we're going to be talking about etymology, okay? And etymology is like the history of words and how they became and all that stuff. And so- Study, uh, right? Because it's an ology. Ology, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I, you know, history is kind of a study of, but but yes, you're, you're exactly right. We're not going to do deep dives into all these words, but we're going to be talking about- We are about, incapable of this. We are not smart we're enough. We're not qualified. But we do have the internet, so we're going to look at some some words that we use in nerd culture, and we're going to play a game here in just a minute to kind of test Anna's knowledge of that. And then we're also going to look at some of the words that we use in Christian culture and kind of see um, progressively how those two jive and grow. So, hey, let's just get into it because I want to play this game. All right. Um, <clears throat> you want to play your game first? Mm, or do we want to end with that game? <sighs> Well, now we set a really weak hook. Um, uh, so I don't know if you guys have ever played like the game. I don't know if it's called Medium or what it's called. I know that sounds like really like New Agey or, you know, occultish, but it's it's really not. You, just, you count to three. I think it's called Medium. You count to three and then you each say a word and mm -hmm. you're trying to get on the same wavelength. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you do that until you get on the same wavelength. Now yes. it's worth noting that our kids love to play this game and they are so I bad at it. I them to it. They are so bad at it. <laughs> so bad Some at it. Some of them are better than others. Caleb is starting to get it. He was the worst originally. He well, he wanted everything to be Fortnite. Everything was Fortnite, <sighs> something or another. Something real or bad. It and was very difficult. Naomi, our daughter, she just doubles down. She's 10 years old. She just doubles down on the thing that she's it's thinking more about more and more and more it's like specific dessert strawberries strawberry cake strawberry cream cake <laughs> strawberry cream cake with frosting it's like dude that's not what we're doing right now we're trying to guess the same word and you're not even listening to what's going on um so uh and then levi just you you say one two three and it's like blank stare 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, birds never heard of them. <clears throat> you fine. and I, I will it's say fine. this. I'm going to, I'm going I'm to give this setup here. Okay. You and I first time ever. You can't first, tell them no, this because then I'm they're going to have expectations I about want, how this is going to go. I want everybody to have the <clears> most <throat> expectations so that this just goes on forever and it's terrible and it's like, it's entertainment. We okay? can, we can recreate it. Oh, no, 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 I don't. We don't need to have a you know dramatic reenactment. It would just be faster. <clears throat> it would, but then there's no story in it. And so <laughs> uh, we, we sit down and I was like, all right, let's do it. And, you know, three, two, one. And we said pancake, banana, and banana. So banana, pancake. All right. For Anna and I, three, two, one, Jack, Jack Johnson. Johnson. All right. 100%. <clears throat> and the kids so are like, easy. what? What? <laughs> what is a Jack Johnson? How did that even happen? <laughs> and I was like, hey, mommy and my <clears throat> first dance was. I don't know if you could, I like the only way you could get it to be faster than that is <clears throat> if you on a whim said the same word. No, because like that kind of stuff to me is like when you guess Wordle on the first try and it's like, you didn't play, you're not playing anything. <laughs> um, you got lucky, right? Like there's no skill involved. You just got lucky. So um, getting, getting Wordle on two, I think then like, then you did something. But anyway, so we got Jack Johnson and told the kids, hey, our first dance was to a song called Better Together by Jack Johnson. He is an artist. Mommy and I like him. He has a song called banana pancakes for us oh, brains yeah. brains worked in a, one a flash flash of a millisecond right um they were still just like that doesn't make any sense <laughs> how did you do that yeah because them it took nine hours oh um, my goodness but yeah. so i give you that setup so that you can watch this train wreck that's about to happen i just know it is i just know that it is <laughs> okay so again you're trying to say one word. Jack Johnson is two words, but that was the next step it was, for us. It was. You're trying to say one word. You're trying to guess the same word. Okay. Are you ready? Are we doing this? Are you ready? Okay. All right. I'm not super ready. Now my heart is racing a little bit <laughs> because like people are watching and listening. And, <clears throat> um, this is the, the situation where Levi, if he, like he would cry, right? <laughs> um, okay. So ready? One, two, three, red, bottle. Huh? red, okay. red bottle. One, two, three, Coke. big red. Oh no. One, two, three, <laughs> soda. soda. Boom, baby. That's pretty Why good. Why didn't you say Coke in the first place? Big red. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bottle of red soda. Hey, just, it's not a red bottle hey, of soda. I'm, all I'm saying, all I'm saying that was two words. <laughs> Coke, red label, one word. It's, hey, it's okay to be wrong. It's okay. Everybody forgives you. We all forgive you, right, everybody? What's that? I'm wrong? Okay, I understood. Hey, uh, you want to do it again? That felt too easy. I don't know. Are uh, we just amazing at this? That's two well, out of two so, times. But that, that, that one took three. Well, I know. So we're getting progressively still worse. So fast. We're getting progressively worse. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Food. Hail. What'd you say? Food. Okay. Uh, okay. I might. Okay. Hold on. Hey, hail. Food. <laughs> Three, two, one. Cloudy ice with cream. the chance of meatballs. You did not <laughs> say cloudy with a chance of meatballs. <laughs> you are your mother, your, your daughter's mother for sure. <laughs> cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Good weather. Okay, oh, what do we say? Cloud with a chance of meatballs and ice cream? Ice cream. Uh, three, two, one. Sprinkles. Rain. No. Rain and sprinkles. Oh my gosh. <laughs> three, two, one. Drops. Weather. Drops. Weather drops. Three, two, one. Precipitation. Precipitation. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like that. I, I mean, I'm glad that it ended. <laughs> Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. I don't know what to do. Hail and food. You food don't, weather. You don't need to try to create content. We do that naturally. I'm <sighs> just saying what came into my head. Yeah, well, right. we need to <sighs> render every thought captive. <laughs> right. Okay. Hey, anyway. play, play that game. Play that game at home with your significant other. Um, and also maybe 
Don't yell at them. It's good yelling. Yeah, good, good yelling. Yeah. Encouragement yelling. Good job with the weird answer. Exhortation. Great weird answer you Spurring had Spurring someone on. Have you ever heard of that? Like spur some, spur one another on toward love and good deeds when it's like, when are spurs ever a good thing? San Antonio Spurs. <laughs> yep. It's a basketball team. Okay. Well, anyway. Hey, speaking of basketball teams, I want to play a game with you. And this is, this is not really a game where we're going to like keep score. Okay. But what I want to do is again, in talking about all of these like different terms and like the terminology that we use and all sorts of stuff. I, I want to, from the nerd side, from gamer side, I want to see if you know what I would consider to be some, some pretty, pretty common terms. And there's a reason why he's quizzing me and I'm not quizzing him. And that's because I uh, it's going to be bad. I am not going to know a lot of this. Oh yeah. I, I would, I would probably get a lot of these. Yes. Yeah. This is my language. This is going to be like, um, uh, malarkey or, or, uh, what is, is it malarkey? There's another balderdash balderdash. I don't know what you're doing right now. When you, isn't balderdash the, has I'm you, not going to, you, you're, you're not, you're not, you hear a word and you try to decide what the definition of that word means yeah. and you submit an answer. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how to play balderdash. So you can't even hardly say it. Balderdash. 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 Okay. Anyway. Baldur's Gate and Dash. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey. Easy one. I don't know what his sister is actually doing right now. <laughs> she may have tried to just rescue us. Maybe. Hopefully she did. Okay. That pause was because we heard the <laughs> door jiggle, and that is always PJ. It is. Always PJ. Yes. Yes. All right. Here we go. Okay, ready. Agro. Agro would be like when like a really intense and like a ragey, like raging out, aggressive, like in a game it would probably be killing something. But that's not a bad it's guess. Just really intense. That's, that's what not I think. a bad guess. So agro, I'm gonna read you the actual definitions that we have here. Okay. Okay. Agro refers to the attention from in-game enemies, often relating to the distance at which an enemy will notice the player, uh, the player character, and engage in combat. Okay. Or in a multiplayer setting, the player being targeted by an enemy. Okay. So you would aggro it, them. You would like? make them mad, make them aggressive, okay. and then they would come towards you. Aggravate them. Aggravate. Okay. Yeah. Aggro. Okay. Um, You'll also, you, you'll hear uh, a lot of nerds say, oh man, hey, I, I can't play tonight. I got wife aggro. Like. She's, you're in the doghouse. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Uh, oh, here's another one. Okay. AOE. AOE. Feel free to play along at home. Uh, mm, all. Orange. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So let's go where. Yeah. A-O-E. I don't know. I don't all, know. Or, all orange what? Um, um, I can't even think of any words to start. Eggs. All orange eggs. Yeah, that's it. I don't know how you got it. I can't think of any E words. Uh, well, how about area of effect? Oh, that would sound more like it would be an actual term for something. It, it is. When it's yeah. not Easter. And it actually, uh, it refers to attacks which will cover a certain area with a damaging effect. What is it again? Area of effect. Area of effect. Okay. Yep. Uh, this is, uh, this is a, a pretty easy one. Okay. Okay. Buff. Buff. I, um, like, like, I'm thinking of actual definitions. So, like, buff, like. Super strong or buff like buffeting? But like Jimmy Buffett? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What like is buffeting? Fending off an attack, fending something off. Is it? I don't know. I, now I'm second guessing. <laughs> I learned, my I learned own a new vocabulary. Term. Buffeting. Buffeting? Is that what you're trying Not to say? Not buffeting, <laughs> but it is spelled the same. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> it's not a golden corral thing though, right? Yeah, that's buff. not it. Buff. Um, a buff is a temporary boost to a oh, player's yeah. okay. enemies or group so of players. So strong, that would be attributes. Correct, right? Okay. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> How right. did you think this was going to go? Hopefully better than this. Okay. Cheesing. Cheesing. Smiling for the camera? Cheese catting. The cheese cat. <laughs> the the category the says, is a nerd. Cheesing. Hmm? You're going with yeah, smiling I'm for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> oh my gosh. I don't okay. know. So cheesing refers to an exploit or a tactic in a game which either avoids a signif or significantly reduces the challenge of certain enemies or situations. So you would cheese your way through an encounter in a game. Uh, Pushing a boss off a ledge or I, something like that. So you don't have to fight it. Does not make sense to me. All right. Camping. Camping. That's when you are like hunkered down somewhere waiting for a thing to happen. Usually it's like you're taking advantage of a spot so you can pick somebody off. That is correct. Yeah. That okay. is correct. People camp in first person shooters all the time. Okay. You camp at Best Buy. <laughs> you can. <laughs> On Black Friday. Uh, oh, FPS. F. First person shooter. Okay. This one could have two meanings. First player. Trying to think of a word. I can't remember what the name is. Uh, I don't know. Okay. So first person shooter. Mm -hmm. That's one of them. The other one is frames per second. Frames per second. I should have known that one, yep. I guess. Frames per second. Okay. Yeah. How smooth is the gameplay on your monitor? Ooh, farming. Farming. I mean, that's basically like uh, you've created kind of a system where you're trying to gain some resource systematically. Like amassing it yeah that's pretty close the act of gathering valuable items or material materials for crafting or in-game progress by repeatedly playing through each area um each area is uh rich in those resources each area that is rich in those resources another word for that is also grinding, grinding. yep grinding let's see let's get you another uh, another good one here <clears throat> oh griefing you know what I think that is? Griefing. I don't know. That's, why, why would I know? There's a word grief in it. Sure. Good grief. Charlie Brown. Griefing. Not grieving. Grief. Griefing. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even, I, cause I feel very sure that it does not mean what I think it means. Well, just, which what do you think be, it means? Like that you are causing angst and making people upset. That is exactly what it means. Oh, okay. Harassing other players. Oh, okay. You're griefing them. Causing people grief. Causing people grief. Hey, here's another softball. Loot. Oh, I know that one. Loot. It's like almost, well, I was going to say it's swag, except maybe not necessarily swag because it's not just being handed out, but it's something right. that drops when you, it's like a reward and you can pick it up and collect it. That's true. Yep. That's, that, that's just as good as anything that they wrote here. NPC. Non-playable character. That is correct. I did not have the correct definition of that term for a long time. You didn't, but you do now. I do now. And so we're very, very, yeah. very proud of you. Noob. Oh, well, that's the person who is green and an idiot at something <laughs> you can be a noob at anything yes as we talk about like the transition between the two realms of nerdy and non-nerdy noob is definitely making making uh the jump there um okay uh one, one of the last ones we're gonna do here nerfing nerfing um nerfing Is that like 
killing somebody off repeatedly on purpose and like being a turd about it. <laughs> that would be griefing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What's that would nerfing? be griefing. Nerfing is when something there's, there's like a buff that things can get and then they can also get nerfed. A thing can either get buffed like or nerfed. downgraded. Yeah. So nerf, nerf darts. Uh huh. Yeah. They're weaker. Oh. Than real bullets. Right. Okay. And so the idea is that whatever it's like the thing watering is. watering something down. Yeah. All right. It's, it's weakened. All right. Last one. RNG. A real nerdy game. <laughs> uh, RNG is in a lot of really nerdy games. Yeah. I, I know I have heard it. I don't know. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Then I don't know. RNG. Uh, it's an acronym for random number generator. Okay. Oh. RNG refers to the weighted elements of chance within a game's design that can significantly impact reward and experience. Okay. Yeah. So people it's will. like slot machine stuff. People will often say, oh man, I'm really play, praying to RN Jesus. They'll say oh, that in the middle okay. of the game. Um, so that, cause they're hoping. Jesus. No, no. Cheesing. No. no. Jesus with a G. RN oh. Jesus. And they're hoping that they get their drop because in games, nothing is, well, not, there are a lot of things that are not like 100%. There may be a high drop rate of something. Like, hey, this thing has a 70 to 80% drop rate. But even then, you could do that entire encounter and fall in the 20% and have to do it all over again and farm it or grind. So mm -hmm. the RNG is the, the odds that you're actually going to get it. Hey, you, didn't right. do, you didn't do too bad. You got a couple of those, right? A couple. Hey, that's more than zero, right? Area of effect. That, yeah. That, that was the... That was hard. You'll never forget it as long as you I sit here till the end of this episode. Might talk about orange eggs still. <laughs> I don't know. What do you, what was the A you said? All, all, all orange, orange all eggs, orange I think. Eggs. Yep. I don't know. AOE, we'll have to go back and watch. All orange eggs. Uh, well, okay. So people uh, How might did you be... do at home? Let us know. Um, <laughs> yeah. At Church Nerds. Make me feel better about myself, maybe. At Church Nerds, I LTN, don't know. I think is what we are. Yeah. Uh, you People might be wondering why we are talking about any of this. And of course, this episode was inspired by ye old TikTok. Oh, the TikTok. I think it, I don't know. You sent me this video and you were like, hey, this would be a cool thing to talk about or yeah. something. Or maybe I said it would be a cool thing to talk about. Um, but it was about... How there are many terms and idioms uh, in our language that revolve around like sports. Yep. Um, terms that have become very common that weren't always common. Um, but now they're so much a part of our vernacular that like, oh man, that's a hole in one. We don't really think oh, you really about, knocked it out of the park there. Yeah. We don't think about like golf and baseball and stuff when we hear those things, but they did originate. Yeah, not necessarily. Yeah. Originate out of sports terms. Um, and even like uh, chess has some like checkmate. Checkmate. Um, I don't know any other chess ones. They, I mean, they said check. Uh, you're a pawn. Oh, a pawn. That's right. Yes. Yep. Um, Which usually means somebody else is controlling you and you're expendable. Yep. Yeah. You get red shirts. Oh yeah, absolutely. Red shirts from Star Trek. Nerdy thing. Yep. Um, cause that, that is getting more common. The red shirts. Mm, it is. Um, and so this guy was talking about how it's not that we're moving away from sports terms, but we're starting to see this introduction of like, video game terms yeah. because the reason that the sports terms made their way into our language, the way that they have already is because um, we tend to find terms that deal with shared experiences. Yeah. Specifically shared cultural experiences. Right. And since baseball is America's pastime, mm. is it still America's pastime? Um, I think just based on the way that it's, that phrase is worded, it will always be America's <laughs> pastime. 
Yeah. Um, but another, a few other sports ones were um, winner by a nose. Okay. I'll give you, you that know one. What that's from? Yeah. It's racing. What kind of racing? Uh, horse racing. Yes. Horse racing. Yeah, okay. probably. Uh, drop the ball. Oof. That could be football. I think it might be tennis. Tennis. I mean, you really you, drop the ball. You really drop the ball there. I mean, you could drop um, the ball in a lot of sports. Uh, take a rain check is a sports term. I need to look it back up. What? Or you can. Um, take a yep. rain check. Mm-hmm. I thought that that was shopping. Well, it, 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 it's so it was from baseball in the 1800s. If there was a game that got oh. rained out, yeah. okay. they would give you a rain check for the game that was rescheduled. Well, not, not the rescheduled game, but you could attend a game in the future. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Because you had paid for your ticket. Uh, yeah, I mean, that makes complete sense. Yeah. Uh, or out of left field. Oh, yeah. Another yeah. baseball one. That, come, that just came out of left field. Yeah, totally. Because nothing, nothing ever comes out of left field. <laughs> left field is where you, you, you put kids to just go hang out for a little bit. Yeah. 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 Um, so we were going to talk a little bit about maybe some other gamer terms that we're starting to hear. You mentioned noob. Yeah. Noob. Are there other ones that you can think of that have started to really, well, obvi- okay. So like game over game over, man is a lot more n- video game. It's nerdy than like other sports. Oh, they, yeah. they didn't really talk about like game over the way that it, I think it was that whole like game, game over, over screen. on your yeah. screen and being like, no, yeah, the end. The definite end, um, you know, having to go back and start over. Like it's, it, it, it has, it has legitimate context when yeah. used even in the real world. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about NPC uh, and like, you may not hear people say you're an NPC kind of a deal. You hear people talking about other people as yeah, being an, uh, NPC. Dude's an NPC. Um, and also <laughs> on things like, even just as recently as earlier this year, there was a massive craze around NPC live streams yeah. on TikTok and weird. Instagram. And I mean, I it made- I watched one for a few minutes and was like, I, this is not my mm. scene, I guess. It I don't made, know. It, it, that literally made me stop watching lives on you know, short form content websites. Yeah. TikTok and Instagram. And so- but that's, that was one of the things that was just so popular. So this, this idea, this NPC came into the mainstream through these platforms that are not just gamer centric. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, yeah, that, that was really wild. Um, he mentioned in the, <clears throat> he mentioned in the, uh, in, in his, in his video here where we drop in, like he's heard people say that out loud. That's a, it's not necessarily just a Fortnite term, but it's like a battle royale term um, where you, just, you have a flyover thing dropped you, somewhere on the map. You choose a spot on the map and you drop out of the thing. Um, you know, Call of Duty has it with Warzone and all sorts of stuff. So where we drop in is what you would actually say in the game to be like, hey, where are we going? And so people bringing that out of the video game space and into real life. It's because that is their shared cultural experience. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And mm-hmm. what's really interesting in this whole thing is that even, even now, well, I say even now, probably like for as long as I have, I've been on this earth, which is, you know, just shy of 40 years now. I, yeah, you're getting old, dude. Um, I mean, you're older. The, I, I've heard more people probably in the last 15 years or so when I use a sports term, Okay. I'm not just some unsports nerd, all right? I'm also not a jock of all trades. Okay? A jock of all trades. <clears throat> uh, there, there, are, there are a certain number of things that I do that are sports related or have been sports related in the past. I've ran Spartan races and we've done other um, you know, races like that, like Tough Mudder and um, Warrior he Dash and we, stuff like that. I just want to clarify. You were there. You were there. I was there and I felt like I had participated in the event because I think I was pregnant. eight months pregnant. Very pregnant. I was very pregnant. 
And I thought that I might end up in the hospital that day just by showing up to spectate. And I am not joking. No. I was not you, a joke. Well, you almost did. And I didn't know that because I was just running. It was very horrible. Um, but even when I've used sports terms, I've had to, to like explain to people, they're like, oh, well, I'm just not a sports person. I'm like, but you, you Maybe know. you're doing it wrong. Maybe you're, maybe you're saying it wrong. Oh, I say, you want to go have a catch? Go have a catch? I don't say that. That's just being silly. <laughs> <clears throat> but like, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's, <clears throat> I assumed, <clears throat> excuse me, I assumed that it was a wide enough used and known term that you could just use it with anybody at any point. But that is not the case. There are still a large swath of people that don't get, understand, identify, or actively resist sports metaphors. People I, actively resist sports metaphors? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know Why? several of them. Um, but so I just- What kind of- People. I'm not at liberty to discuss, but thank you for trying to draw that out live on air. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so, so anyway, what I have to do is I have to do a little bit of what's known as code switching. Okay. So um, code, code switching for those of you that are unfamiliar gets a pretty bad rap, but it gets a pretty bad rap because people code switch. Manipulatively. Manipulatively. I can't say that word. Got manipulatively. Yeah. Or, or in an inauthentic kind of a way. Okay. Right. Um, and the way I was talking to you about it earlier was like, uh, hello, fellow students. Um, you know, it's the old guy with the skateboard over his back. Um, hey there, hey there, fellow youths. I'm hip. I'm cool. Like you're cool. I'm going to say the words that you say. Um, but we have talked about not just in nerd culture, but in other cultures that people can smell if you're disingenuous. I mean, they, they can understand that. They know when you do or don't really belong to the same group that they do. Yeah. And so that just got me thinking, right? Like we're talking about these shared cultural experiences and how it is. This, this is not my, my interpretation of situations. This is just the way that things are going. If you don't believe me, talk to somebody who is outside of your generation, whether, whether you're a boomer all the way down to millennial, it doesn't matter. Talk to somebody who is younger than you are, and I can almost guarantee you, if you're talking to a Gen Z or a Gen Alpha, they're using a Fortnite term to explain something to you. My kids are going around, yes, Anna's face right now. My kids are going around right now. Again, mine are 12 all the way down to three. Three-year-old doesn't know what he's talking about, but like 12, uh, we'll say right 12, left. 12 to eight. He knows yeah, that. Di well, dinosaurs and fish. 12 to eight, <clears throat> okay, in, the, in, our, in our house. Any that, force? Um, yeah, super dino power. And so Always. within the 12 to eight, eight year old range in our house, these are my, our gen alphas. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what we're seeing is that they are only ever talking about Fortnite. So much so that even when Fortnite drops something new, heavy air quotes on new. Uh, for instance, they dropped something from Eminem. Okay. Up, up, like a couple of seasons ago. Not the candy, the wrapper. All right. Um, so for some of you, that might be a distinction that needs to be made. And so they're going around singing Slim Shady, the real Slim Shady. Okay. And not knowing what they're singing, but it's an emote in Fortnite. Yeah. And so it is culturally relevant to them. They're doing the gritty. They're doing um, the, what's that thing where they're like skating on air, the hatchback or the halfback or something like that. I'm not super cool and I'm not pretending to I be. I don't I don't know. But Fortnite is influencing culture in a massive kind of way. So if you are a parent or a youth leader or anybody with anybody young that you are accountably influenceable over, you should familiarize yourself with what's going on inside of games like Fortnite and Roblox and these popular titles because it is literally what's driving the way that they talk. Um Caleb, our 12 year old, um, what is he saying? Yeah. Yeah. That, I was like, is that what, what you're talking about? Yeah. And he says it for everything. And I'm like, dude, hey, I, I love you. 
you got to stop doing, you got to stop nanting me. Yeah. I'll take bruv, bro. I'll take that. Give me, give me that back all day long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, bro. I mean, yeah. Bro. Uh, Hey, Caleb, are, I need you to, do, I need you to do the dishes. Can you do that? Yeah. Said yes. Or was that a no? Yeah. It was like, it's like almost like just kidding or something. Or when he thinks he's cute or funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't, I don't fully understand what I, it is. I, so as a parent, like I think about my mom sometimes how I know some of the stuff we did and said got on her nerves. I just feel like there's no way possible. Like she had to have been super patient. I don't remember her constantly being like, stop. But that's how I feel a lot All the time with, with my kids. kids where All I'm like, time. show forbearance, show forbearance, show forbearance. No, nope, I do cannot it. do it one Can't more it. time. Stop saying that. Yep. I don't know. I'm not very patient. Well, so it got me thinking <clears throat> that like language is moving. Watch your language. Yeah. La- language is, is moving and or progressing, regressing, however you want to say it, it. It is in a state of movement, a constant state of movement. Sure. At a more rapid rate than I think we're used to right now because of the advent of technology and communication and all sorts of stuff. Like things are just changing more frequently than they had been. Yeah, and I I get to where I think I feel this way about fashion as well. You kind of realize that parents that you made fun of when you were a kid for being like stuck in a different decade. Yep. It's like they I don't know if they felt like I feel where I'm like sometimes I just feel like I couldn't possibly keep up if I wanted to. Can't do it. So why even bother anymore? Can't do it. I can't. And I found a style that works for me. <laughs> and so that lady who wore the winged bang hairstyle Forever. way longer than everybody else was doing it. And I thought it was so strange. I am sorry. She just found a thing that she really thought worked for her and you know what? Go her. Why was I so judgmental? I don't know. Yeah. Here I am like making excuses for myself to be, to have kind of a, for lack of a better term, like a boomer mindset where it's like, I don't need to change. You need to change. You, you come to me, you come to me. Sure. I need to not be like that. I guess the question for me, I'm not asking you to answer this because once again, if you have never been a part of this podcast before, we don't answer a lot of questions, but we ask a bunch of them. Tons of them. Um, like, how, how do I still stay relevant and communicate and show somebody that I care without having to learn every, every single thing? Because the, I mean, there's, there's so, there's so much of it. Yeah. There, there's so <coughs> much of it. There's Fortnite, and there's, and there's you know, all this, it used to be TikTok and apparently it's not TikTok anymore. TikTok oh, TikTok's is, out? Yeah, that's what, am I telling you this? Because it, yeah. they've been telling me this. TikTok is done. Who's they? All, all of the people speaking for teenagers. Oh, okay. Got it. On behalf of them that they, they kind of like vacillate between Instagram and something else as far as social networks that are involved. Because, Interesting. Because TikTok, older people, probably our generation found it and they're like, ugh, it's just old people here now. <laughs> hey, sorry. So, but like, I mean. We like cool things too. I know. And I think when you're talking about like the emotes and all that stuff and singing Eminem songs, I'm like, oh, I really want my kids singing Eminem songs. I think I, mean, I feel kind of the same way about that as like, when girls were learning a bunch of dances to songs that it's like, <clears throat> oh man, oh, yeah. if you only knew all of the lyrics to that song. Yeah, or any of them. I don't know if you would be dancing it with your kid on TikTok or whatever. Well, I mean, so like all that, all that being said, like culture, that's really the, like the, the heart of this topic, right? Is that culture is changing rapidly. Um, and so it got me thinking months ago when we started talking about this yeah, topic. Yeah, it's been a minute. Months ago. 
Um, <clears throat> are we as Christians, those of us who are Christians, that if you're not, enjoy this peek behind the curtain just as I verbally process some of these things, right? Are we as Christians doing the same thing, but like in a negative way? Like, are we saying, hey, culture is changing around us, the way the way we're using terminology, the way that all this stuff is progressing and, and whatever. It's, it's changing around us, but we are stick in the mud. Um, you know, to, to put it into biblical standards, we are a tree planted by the water. We shall not be moved, right? Everything else will move around us. We are not moving, which I think, yeah, I mean, like to, to some extent, that's perfect. Nailed it. We are supposed to in some ways, but is it every way? Is, is it every way that we are supposed to just plant and go, nope. Yeah, I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's and then really- we, we get mad at people. I'm sorry, I, I had an extra thought and I Keep apologize. Going. Keep going. Because we as, we as Christians and, you know, we, 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 I almost said and something, forget the end. We as Christians, we do something where like, we will then demean other people if they're not on the same brainwave as we are. Um, I, I mean, I think it's a little bit of a, a well, you're a noob. Like- yeah. You know, like you, I'm just so much more learned than you because I know As Kanye this thing. would say only halfway read Ephesians. <laughs> okay. I was in one of his songs. Well, I, I mean, any group that you walk into has so much language that you have to learn. Mm. And even, even certain terms, I used to be really annoyed when I was doing things on the internet, I would go into a new group and especially if it's a like an online kind of space where you're Familiar. mostly yeah. using some sort of a text like communication form yeah. then you have certain terms that you use a lot and that become very cumbersome to type out and so they start like using acronyms sure. or whatever but then you go to a different group and you have to learn a whole new set of acronyms or they might use the same acronyms but, but they mean completely different things and I was like, ah, this is really, this is really hard. But it, it just is, it just is a part, as frustrating as it is, sure. it is a part of walking into a new place. Like you, there is a learning curve and that is never going to stop. Sure. That is never going to stop. I think your question is like, I guess, how do we ease that and make it, not like pre prevent it from being a barrier. That's the word. And um, like not make people feel like idiots. That's the word. They're going to feel like idiots, That's but the, like yeah. not try to hold their hand through that feeling instead of just making them feel the full. Yeah. I mean, it. so a lot of what we do here with love thy nerd and just with our relational evangelistic approach, which that even that word evangelism, right? evangelicals like it is just yeah, yeah i'm using word it's getting crucified right like um and that one full is, of these fun words today add it to the list <clears throat> but like those those things are getting those, those words are are actually getting like lambasted right now because of what they have entailed for a while or seem to entail based on a certain sect of people or an idea or an event or something like that. But what we at LTN try to do with our, our like relationally evangelical approach is to kind of make, make the message fit the person or the persons or the group or the demographic or whatever that we're actually trying to be a part of rather than coming in and using that barrier analogy, right? That, that term, that understanding rather than coming in and creating a less approachable version of Jesus. Well, right? so when you brought up code switching, I think as with many, many things that we talk about, there's so much nuance in that. It's like you can't be code switching. Can't be so much your way of doing things that you a forget who you not forget who you are, but sure. like, that you have no almost integrity. You are just this shifting sh like sand mm -hmm. kind of thing where it's like, who is that person? I don't know. Like, 
I, we, we've been around people like that, that it was like, you couldn't really get a handle on who they were mm. as a person because they were so busy trying to impress you or cater to you yeah. that it was like, I am tired of you telling me what I want to hear. I just want to know yeah. you. So all the time, like there can be too much of it. But on the other hand, if you're like, nope, <clears throat> I am who I am, no matter where I am. And I say what I want to, I mean what I say and I say what I mean. And I say everything on my mind, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that kind of thing. Like we've seen that also be super detrimental. I mean, lots, oh, hurtful. lots yeah. of church people do that. Well, I'm just, this is what the Bible says. And so I'm just going to say, like, I can't, you know, I'm not ashamed. Ugh. Well, I'm, I'm ashamed. not asking you I'm to ashamed be of what ashamed you just said. Yeah. of the gospel, but it's like, do you really want to, do you want to lead with that thing? And it's hard because Jesus led with some really crazy stuff about like eating his body and drinking his blood one time that was like, whoa, man, like that. Shut down a, almost an entire movement overnight. <laughs> it did. Um, so, but I mean, there, I don't know, like it is hard to find the balance. I think that the church has tried to do it. Yeah. Uh, one example I was talking to you about before we really started recording was um, the terms fellowship oh, and yeah. life group or doing, doing life, life together. I was like, you know how I know somebody has been in the church for a while, but especially in the last 15 years as they'll be like, Oh man, I just, I love doing life. They with do you. life together. And I'm like, yeah. I love doing life with you too. This sounds so churchy to me right now because I've never met a person outside of church who's like, I just love doing life with you. It's like, yeah, I love hanging out with you. Yeah, I love, love being, being your friends. Friend. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you're my people. Yeah. I don't know if the term even maybe community is community a super churchy term. Um, I use it a lot, but I'm not sure if that one goes actually into even more people, secular spaces. I think people have are an, and are a part of communities. I don't know that they necessarily talk about being in like community. Your community, like your town, <clears throat> versus yeah, my like group of close knit yeah. people who are going to be here for me. Yeah, I don't, versus I've, I've my if you have, please let us cult know. Community. Oh, I'm going yeah, to yeah. a community to live in where we well, pour all of our money yeah. in the same pot, etc. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think that it's, I think, I think you're right. Um, and I, I think that we, we have, we've done a lot of those things, but, but again, I think it comes down, like you were talking about earlier to this idea of like, how genuine is what you're doing? Because if you're just code switching just to, just to code switch, or if you are even using these, th these words and this terminology, as a way to compartmentalize and differentiate and create barriers. Like I think both of those things are, are equally as hurtful. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think that sometimes, sometimes it's so necessary. Um, I think a really classic example of this is, uh, I, I hope someone from our church is watching this. <laughs> I'll watch it. <laughs> oh, so we have several pastors on staff. One of our pastor, our senior pastor is, let he's got his doctorate mm -hmm. and he is real like smart and he loves words and he loves a lot of words and Caleb our son our oldest son has a hard time connecting with him um because I think I don't know if it's just that so much of it goes over his head in very specific scenarios though like on a Sunday morning during preaching time, yes, he right. has a hard time. Yes, yes. Any time out of that? Speaking, speaking style. Where uh, another one of our pastors on staff, who he was the, a student pastor when he originally came on staff, super used to teaching teenagers. And so he'll get up there and he, you know, it's not, they both tell stories, mm -hmm. but it's just something about the way. Yeah, cadence and delivery. That the other tells a story and maybe might talk about like, just being a stinky teenage boy or yeah. like whatever that can really unlock communicating with our 12 year old. Oh yeah. And so in a certain sense, it's like 
code switching is a necessary part of communication. Has to be. Because if if it's always, you're just not going to reach people. Yeah. If you are so locked into this one way of doing things that yeah, you're just, you're, you're not. You have to be fluid. You have to be like a nimble, right? Mm-hmm. You have to be, you know, malleable in some way, shape or form. But I, I do think you were talking earlier about like the negative side of that. And we see that in scripture um, where, you know, Peter is confronted by Paul. And he's like, hey, dude, we were just like here hanging out with the Gentiles and everything was cool and it was fine. But now you don't want to hang out with them anymore. They're not your people. It's not cool anymore because you're because the Jews are here now. That can't that's not cool, man. Like we can't we can't do that. And so I think mm. I would really love to have the book of the Gentiles that speaks about that moment. Like, dude, I thought Peter was our guy. It was like he was really cool, it had a lot of fun. And then these old dudes came around and he just like changed, man. Like it was, it was weird. Like, I think that that's how the secular, you know, culture and community, I think that's how they see us as Christians sometimes mm-hmm. is that sometimes when we're out and about Monday through Saturday, we're one way. And then we get in the church on a Sunday and right. it's like, well, you're, you're different and not in a good way. It's not There's something different about you. What is that? Is that Jesus? <laughs> it's like, Whoa, dude, like, what? <laughs> Yesterday. You, you were cussing you out a coach at a football game. So different. And now you're, hey, man, like, ah, what are we doing? <laughs> you know. And so <clears throat> we get into these situations where people will literally say out loud to us as Christians, um, hey, you're not any different than me any other day of the week. What's, what's the point of me becoming Christian? Right. And so we kind of lose that part of our witness to go, Because, obviously, you should just come to church more. You'll get it. You'll understand. Um, but I, I think that's why, you know, with at Love Thy Nerd, we talk about not necessarily taking that off. And I fail. Anybody who's listening or watching this and is like, hey, Bubba, actually, uh, yesterday you dot, 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 X, Y, Z. Yeah, I, I fail miserably at this a ton. What did you dot, 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 X, Y, Z? Uh, bring any of our kids in. I'm sure that they could tell you. Um, mm. I hung a microwave. Yeah, you did. Yeah, that's not the Bible. Good job. Um, but Wait, without the mounting kit, yeah, without the mounting, that's all another you. story for all the time. Um, but I do think that we kind of get into these, these scenarios and these situations where we're not actively living in a way that would be, um, you know, becoming to Jesus and what he has called us to be. But then we turn around and we try to put all these delineating factors. Um, and so when I was thinking about like words and the etymology and how culture is growing and it's moving into a more like gamer centric not not even space, but just like way that we talk. Because way back when, okay, it wasn't that everybody played sports. It's just it, nobody is ever going to do all of the things. That's that's too superlative of a statement. Right? Everybody isn't going to do one always thing. Always and, you know, always and never, everybody, nobody, all these things. That's not it. it it's, it's all gray area. But what's really interesting is that the way that we we use the word Christianese, mm-hmm. right? Okay. But even the term that we use, that's not Christianese. It's we, we churchified that. Uh, the, the term and the phrase that we use about the words that we use or any other organization or group uses is called insider baseball. Like, Hey, this is a little bit of insider baseball words that we use is this. We have our own signals, our own signs, our own everything. Like even that's a sports term. I wonder what that's going to be like in 10 years if we're still going to use the word insider baseball or if it's going to be schematic or something like that. Um, you know, hey, these are the blueprints, which you would think would mean for a building, but it actually means for crafting and video games. Like the way that the verbiage and stuff is moving forward. So I think that it's important for us. How do I form this into a question? What could we do, right? What You're doing could, great. What could we do? As humans, people, adults, doesn't matter what your age range is. What could we do to better understand and communicate with not just the emergent generation, not just the generations that are that are coming, but the generations that are actually here right now? And that means that we're going to have to do things different ourselves. In the same way, we wouldn't want a language barrier to keep us 
from sharing the gospel or building a relationship with somebody who we needed to do that with. You wouldn't go to Nicaragua and not learn Spanish. You would not do that. Okay. That would be a bad idea to just sit around and go, I guess I'll just wait for everybody to learn English. Right. And then, then it would be good because if I, who have the knowledge of the saving power and grace of Jesus Christ, cannot communicate that with the people that I'm trying to talk to, how is that any different than me going to a foreign, you know, a, a foreign land, foreign country, and tr trying to share that with them in a language that they don't understand? It doesn't matter how Christian I am, right? We can get into tongues and all that stuff. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just like, Bread and butter, meat and potatoes, every day, sharing the gospel and, and living it out with people. If you cannot communicate that with them, then you lose it. So the whole basis of this entire you know, conversation, from, from my standpoint, when I brought this up, was how do we as the church not do the things that the church is really good at, which is being 10 to 15 to 20 years behind? But how do we meet culture in the space where it is without compromising morals and theology and all sorts of other things that you are having questions about right now, listener and or viewer and or wife, right? That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying how do we morph into something that is more appeasing, but how do we meet culture in the spaces where they already find themselves, right? So anyway, we don't answer these questions. We just ask them. And I think. If you need some steps in the right direction, just find the things that the people in your space are talking about and learn about those things. Fortnite is a really easy way um, because it is, like I promise you, it is driving mm -hmm. a lot. Our uh, high school team here locally, state champs. Yep. In Fortnite. Sure are. Ask our me how many other state team. champs we had this year at our high school. <laughs> Rhymes with zero. Okay? It was just them. And so I'm already starting to have conversations locally about what does that mean for the state of like nerd culture and video games and all sorts of stuff within the context of our area. And those, those conversations are happening very fast mm -hmm. where I've been, I've been cooking in it for over a decade now. Mm -hmm. They're like, ah, ah, how do we do it? Well, <laughs> here's what we could do. And so it's a really exciting time, but I will say this. If you have any questions, hit us up at, at Love Thy Nerd on all social media platforms or go to lovethynerd.com or you can send me an email, bubba at lovethynerd.com if you are um, a Luddite and you don't know how to do anything but email. I'd love to talk to you over that. A what? A Luddite. You can Google that later. I'm not, I can't teach you everything, okay? All right. Yeah. Well, there it is. Hey, Anna. Yes. Do you, what do you want to do first? Nerdy recommendation? We got a nerdy recommendation. We always do nerdy recommendations. We have a nerdy first. recommendation. Okay. My computer fell asleep. We're going to um, say it at the same time. Ready? One, two, three. Code, code names. names. Just kidding. We didn't have to say it at the same time. That was dumb. I'm glad that's what you wanted to say. <laughs> um, hey, our nerdy recommendation for today is a tabletop game called Code Names by CGE, Check Games Edition. And it's fantastic. It's fantastic. It is word association. Yes. Uh, it is team based. Yes. You can play it online for free. We'll have the link in the description. Or you can go to, geez, almost anywhere and buy it. Yes. It's very, very easy to pick up at Target yeah. or all kinds of different places. Yeah. Um, and man, that one is one that... I mean, you're either going to do real well with your teammates because you think on the same level or you are oh, going to do boy. terrible, not because either of you are dumb, but you just think different. Yeah. Well, and so we've played with uh, like a, a fairly large group. So maybe like a team of five or something like that. Right. Um, and basically what you're trying to do is you have a grid that's out in front of you that has these cards that have uh, random, random, random words, words. On, you know, just think, think of random, sing, like nouns, nouns. Okay? Yes, nouns. Um, and then you, uh, as the code master for your team, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get people to guess 
as many of those words using one single word as you possibly can. Yeah. Because the whole point- One word that's going to loop as many of the ones you're trying to get them to guess at the same time while simultaneously not saying certain other words. Yes, you're trying to avoid other words. Yeah. Uh, there are like, they're called spies. Uh, oh no, civilians, which well, are just like- the, the other team and then there's the neutral words and yep. then there's one that'll get you dead. Yeah. So I think, that, I think that's called the spy. The assassin. Or- assassin. Yeah. If, if you guess, if they, if they say that's the word he's talking about or she's talking about, yeah. you're out of here. It's a fantastic game. It comes in 1 million different varieties. But I'm just going to say this. Get the base normal one. But here's the deal. I'm going to caveat her caveat and say this. Because if you, if you have smaller children, okay, um, there is Codenames Pictures. I think it's so much harder. <laughs> it's way harder. There's there's a Disney one. There's there's okay. Disney, there's Harry Potter, there's Marvel. Like it, it's a pretty highly um like licensed game. Yes. And so you can play within the world that you want to. Uh or you can just get codenames vanilla. Um That's what it's called. Codenames vanilla. It's not vanilla, but okay. Some of the words we use come from food. Yep. And ice cream. If somebody ever mentions a game being vanilla, they just mean base, like the basic, the original. Because some people don't enjoy vanilla ice cream as much as other kinds of ice cream. This guy right here. I don't here. know why vanilla is awesome. I could go, it is very sweaty in here. I could go for a lot of ice cream right now. Oh, yeah. Hey, we're about to be done. Don't <gasps> worry about it. Speaking of being done, Anna, we have a church nerds. Memory verse. This is. This is. Yeah. Memory verses. So, several. Uh, okay. This is actually from 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 22. Though I'm free and belong to no one, I've made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law. So as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I'm not free from God's law, but I'm under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I've become all things to all people, so that by all possible means, I might save some. Hmm. Well said, Paul. Code switching? Code switching. A little bit. Code switching for sure. Um, And so, hey, take this, do with it what you will. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please do us a favor. Hit us up online at Love Thy Nerd on all major platforms. You can also send me an email, Bubba at Love Thy Nerd. We'd love to respond to that and have some correspondence with you. We can set up a one-on-one time to talk about it, or we can sit down and talk about stuff with a group of people if that's what P- you'd like P- to do. PVP. Not PV- PVP. We're not going to be versus each other. Oh. PV- the V is versus. <laughs> <laughs> P- PWP. Uh, people with people. I'm trying, um, I'm trying, I'm trying great. to use the great. words I was learning. I know what PVP means. PVE is player versus environment. And so that is Not usually everyone. Where- player versus everyone. Everybody against one. <laughs> no, that's wrong. <laughs> um, but anyway, hey, uh, this is going to do it for, for this episode and for this season of Church Nerds. We will be back in August. Will we? We will be back in hey, August. Okay. You heard it here first. Folks. Yeah, they're great job. And so uh I don't know when early August Tired. sometime. Early August sometime. But we'll be back with a, a bunch of great new episodes. If there's anything that you would like for us to cover, please use one of those communication platforms I mentioned earlier. Let us know. If not, we're gonna get out of here. But if no one else tells you this, just remember it's true. Jesus loves you, nerd. <laughs> <laughs>